As the father of an 11-year-old girl, you're darn right. I don't want her sharing a locker room with biological males. Woke doctors are literally practicing mutilation, not medicine, and they should be in prison. I'm Chris Miller, and I'll sign that law as governor. Paid for by Miller for Governor. Hello, this is Laura Chandler, mortgage specialist at City National Bank, inviting you to call or visit a local branch and ask about our champion mortgage with no down payment. That's right, zero down payment. City National Bank can help you purchase your dream home today. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. In this segment, we will meet the candidates for the Berkeley County Prosecuting Attorney's Office. There is no incumbent in this particular race. The candidates are... Joe Kinzer and Jason Stedman each will get an opportunity for a two-minute opening statement, and then we'll rotate the order around for the closing statement of two minutes uh, afterward. Questions will be asked by Bill Stubblefield and by John Gilstrap as well. Uh, Candidates, if your name is invoked by the other in a response, you get the opportunity to do a direct response after that particular person who invoked your name has concluded uh, their statement, and if you'd like that direct response, just raise your hand and we'll acknowledge you and you can do a direct response uh, should you choose. Try to keep your answers to the questions to two minutes or less uh, if you can. If you absolutely need more time to elaborate, uh, please let us know uh, that you feel it's a more complicated answer and uh, we'll do our best to abide by your request for more time. Uh, now we will start with our opening statement, and for the opening statement, we'll go with Joe Kinzer first. Joe? Good morning. Thank you all for having me. My name is Joe Kinzer, and I'm running to be the Berkeley County Prosecutor. I have served the people of Berkeley County as an assistant prosecutor for the last nine years, and during that time, I've been responsible for investigating and prosecuting some of the biggest and most difficult cases here in Berkeley County. I've devoted nearly the last decade to effectively prosecuting crime right here and trying to keep Berkeley County safe every day. I am the only candidate in this race with the skills, the drive, the experience, and the leadership to continue Berkeley County forward. Berkeley County has a forward momentum right now. We are the the growing part of this state, and I am the right candidate to keep us moving forward as your next elected prosecutor. Uh, During my years as an assistant prosecutor here in Berkeley County, I've established myself as a leader within the office, and I've earned the respect not just of the other assistant prosecutors, but of the criminal justice system as a whole here in Berkeley County. That's why I'm I'm proud to be able to announce that I'm supported and endorsed by law enforcement, specifically the West Virginia Troopers Association, as well as the West Virginia Deputy Sheriff's Association. I've also been endorsed by both neighboring elected prosecutors in Morgan and Jefferson County because what that shows to you, the voter, is that the people who know what it takes to do this job, to do it well, right here in Berkeley County, all those people are saying the same thing, and that's to vote for Joe Kinzer for Berkeley County Prosecutor. And so I will be asking for your vote on May 14th. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Jason Stedman. Good morning. My name is Jason Stedman. I'm running for prosecuting attorney here in Berkeley County. I've been I've been an attorney for approximately 25 years. I've been practicing law since 2000. Um, I started my career as a prosecutor in Pinellas County, Florida. I'm aware of the challenges of being a prosecutor in a large growing county. I'm well equipped to deal with that and move this county forward. I'm also an experienced community leader. I've been very experienced in community doing things like Boy Scouting. I've been the council president responsible for 3,000 youth in over 11 counties in, in four states. That gives me the important opportunity to be in contact, in concert with other community leaders to know what needs to happen going forward. So I think that experience is going to be vastly important because as the prosecutor, you're going to have to work with individuals and other offices and other groups to make sure that we can move forward with what needs to be done. Prosecuting in Pinellas gave me a good opportunity to have a good perspective because it was a very large county. There were over a million people in the county. I understand the challenges that comes with a large office. I'm willing to accept those challenges and I'm willing to move us forward. Like Joe, I want to make sure that we move Berkeley County forward. My family's been here for eight generations. I'm proud to be back here, proud to be working for the last over 10 years here in the area, running a business and doing the things that need to be done on a daily basis. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Now for our opening question, Mr. Gilstrap. 
All right, <clears throat> start with Jason, simply because you're on my left and I have to do it that way or my head will explode. Um, last year in Berkeley County, there were 260 child abuse and neglect cases. What can the prosecutor's office do to address this crisis? The prosecutor's office has to work with the department to get done what it can for the child abuse cases. I've been doing child abuse and neglect cases for a number of years now. Um, I understand what has to happen. There has been a backlog in cases. The department is vastly understaffed. I would have to work with what I can to make sure that they can get more individuals. They don't have enough caseworkers. They don't keep caseworkers long enough to do what needs to be done. But as a prosecutor, I would do what I can to make sure that we, just, we support them in all that we can do. The child abuse cases are some of the worst cases that are out there. They need to be addressed and they need to be worked well. It can't be something that we try to simply brush under the rug and try to handle with what few folks we can find that, need, that can deal with the problem. Joe. Thank you. Um, you know, when I started my career as a prosecutor here in Berkeley County, that was the docket that I initially had. And when I had that docket, there was one prosecutor and one judge. That was Judge Lawrenson. And uh, that's not the state of the docket anymore. As you said, last year's numbers are big. Uh, at this year, right now, just in April, we're already at 88. And each one of those numbers is a child. In case that's how those case numbers work. Each one of those numbers is a child. Um, I have been the the representative for the Berkeley County Prosecutor's Office on the multidisciplinary investigative team for Berkeley County, the MDIT, uh, during the entirety of my career. I, I think other than Sergeant C, I'm the longest standing member on that. And we meet once a month and review every case with kids. And the, the case numbers that we're seeing and that we're reviewing and the types of cases that we're receiving is shocking. I think that crimes against children are one of the top three issues moving forward uh, in my administration that is going to need worked on. And the reality is there is only so much that we can do. We've already doubled it up. There are now two judges that handle that docket. There are now two prosecutors who handle that docket and they are swamped. Uh, that is the busiest docket in the courthouse. Uh, if that means adding more people, it, it might be. It all comes back to the Department um, of Health and, or whatever, Department of Human Resources, I believe is their name now, or Human Services. Um, and their ability to effectively investigate and have the manpower to investigate this. Uh, but having the connections that I have within CPS, law enforcement, in the child abuse and neglect arena, uh, it certainly does help having someone who can quarterback and coordinate with known individuals uh, and folks that we've built relationships with for years. So I do think that I can add to that with my relationships with these individuals moving forward. Bill. Gentlemen, let's get down in the weeds a little bit. Uh, describe what you believe to be the most important considerations when determining when or whether to indict a felony case. And I'll start with you, Mr. Kinzer. Sure. When and where to indict a felony case. Uh, so a lot of what I do as a felony prosecutor right now in Berkeley County is just that, making those decisions of when and, and what to indict in a case. And uh, Really, the only consideration or the prime consideration is when that case is good and ready and prepared, okay? As a prosecutor, a couple things. We are always held to a higher standard than anybody else in that courtroom. We have a quasi-judicial ethical role in the courtroom that we have to be fair and that we, it, more is asked of us. And we have to have our T's crossed and our I's dotted when we bring a case or a judge can dismiss that case. And we only get one shot in a criminal case. There's Double jeopardy exists. We get one swing at the bat to try to have a successful prosecution. And so the most important, important consideration is, is that case as good as it can be? Is it ready to prosecute? Because if we fail, we don't get a second chance. And there are other considerations that are important, certainly in our office right now, uh, and I would continue this, anyone who is incarcerated pre-indictment, they are of the utmost importance. They are, they are the top priority. We try to get to their case and get it ready to indict as quickly as possible. But you cannot sacrifice effectiveness for efficiency. And the biggest, most important factor is and always will be, is that case ready to go? Thank you. Mr. Stedman? The most important thing about the grand jury is it's just the prosecutor and the grand jury. There's no defense lawyers. There's nobody in there that's going to be challenging your cases on, on a regular basis. It's just if you can show and demonstrate that you've got what you need to go forward and get a true bill, it's what you need to do. It would be my 
goal to make sure that all incarcerated individuals are ready to be brought to the grand jury within the first term and make sure that they are brought to the grand jury for the first term. Individuals that are sitting and waiting for indictment that are in jail cost this county $48.33 a day, and we need to make sure that we keep those bills down as much as we can. If the case is ready, and I understand there will be cases that will be waiting on labs and things like that, I understand those cases must wait, but the overwhelming majority of those incarcerated individuals should be brought to grand jury within their first term as quickly as possible so we can bring them to court, bring them to circuit court, and bring them to justice. John. <clears throat> Switching on the more practical side of things, what experience, both in uh, management and litigation, do you have that would make you the best candidate? for the prosecutor's office, and we'll start with Mr. Stedman. I've been practicing law for 25 years. I spent the first six of those mm -hmm. as a prosecutor in Pinellas County, Florida, which is a major metropolitan market. Uh, I've worked in business since then. I've ran my own business for a number of years. I understand what needs to be done. I've led community organizations, as I mentioned, um, this, the um, president of the local Boy Scout Council, that means I need to be able to raise almost a million dollar a year to support operations. We make sure that that gets done. Um, I can lead individuals, I can make sure that we can work interdepartmentally with other organizations to get what needs to be done. That experience and communi community leadership is what makes me the best candidate for prosecuting attorney. Thank you. So, you know, my trial record in litigation history is it's pretty well known, I think, in this uh, race. I'm the senior assistant prosecuting attorney in Berkeley County right now. Uh, I got to that position by my abilities at trial and the fact that I have established myself as a leader within the office. Um, I've tried, I, I tried to look back about five years uh, is about all my memory could serve. And I was at, uh, I believe, 21 circuit court jury trials within the last five years. And that includes when the world shut down for COVID. So as far as a trial attorney, uh, I've tried more cases than any other assistant prosecutor in the office during my time here. And that means something in a prosecutor's office. That's why the young lawyers in the office come to my office every day and ask me about cases because I've established myself as a leader and a litigator in the office and they want my advice on what to do. And I, I, I teach them and I show them what the best way to, to handle a particular case is. And the thing about prosecutors is you have to lead them by example. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't have the experience and you're just sitting in the corner office because the, the people voted you there, I mean, that's great. But that's not going to captivate young prosecutors. That's not going to lead them. They need to be led by example. Uh, and I have established that I can and will and do already lead those prosecutors by example. Uh, and so that's why I think that both my litigation experience and my experience, not just within any office, you know, but this office in particular has uh, made me the prime candidate to be the next prosecutor. Community service has been a very useful tool and has been embraced uh, quite aggressively by our current prosecuting attorney, but that's not always been the case. What would you do to improve community service? and the benefits to both the individual and also the county. Mr. Kinzer. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so our office has uh, really, from since Katie came into office, or Ms. Delegetti, has supported all of the community corrections uh, uh, initiatives here in Berkeley County. And actually, I do need to correct something for my opponent. Uh, the jail cost has actually gone up. It's $54.48 a day. That's something that we are cognizant of in the office. We get reports weekly about uh, who's in jail, and we get uh, reports monthly about the monthly jail bill. And it is something that we focus on in community corrections, be it community service, home confinement, or of course the success of the day report center. Uh, those are all tools that I will continue to utilize because if you ask the folks at community corrections, they'll tell you they've had incredible success at bringing down our jail bill, but they would not be there if it weren't for 100% buy-in from our office, from the prosecutor's office. If they were fighting us the whole way, it would have never had the success that it has. Um, and so I will continue to support all of those programs. Uh, they've proven effective. I believe uh, Day Report saves the county about $3.5 million a year. Home confinement, $2 million a year. Um, we've got a great new machine for the litter pickup uh, with community service that I'd 
I'd love to see that out there every day and would completely support it. But not only do I support it, the assistant prosecutors who are in magistrate court, which is mainly where those, those services get rendered, is through magistrate court. We're all bought in, 100%, as a team, and we support that, and we'll continue to support that in my administration. Thank you. Mr. Stedman? I completely support community corrections. It's a good opportunity to get some individuals out of the jail, and it's a good opportunity to give back to Berkeley County. As you know, a large chunk of, of what we do for community service is doing litter pickup along the roadside. And I thank the, the court marshals for running that program. They do an excellent job. They're very dedicated in what they do. Um, you see them out on a regular basis cleaning up our roads, and I think that's important for Berkeley County. But when we look at community service as community corrections in general, we're able to pick up more than litter. We're able to solve some people's problems. We're able to work on addiction. We're able to get people services through the Day Report Center. And I am full 100% support of what they're doing. Thank you. John. All right, let's talk about the structure and staffing of the prosecutor's office. Um, is it adequately staffed? And if not, where do you find, and where do you find the funding for the additional staff? Or what do you do? Is it adequately structured? And if not, how would you go about changing it? We'll start with Mr. Stedman. Well, I believe they're short right now in number of prosecutors. Um, you have to do what you can to recruit some new young attorneys into the office. Um, I believe that that can be done. We, we can look at how the office is structured um, into different divisions and that nature. Right now, we, we're running in magistrate court and circuit court. Uh, we can we can look at how things are structured, and I think we can try to be a little bit more efficient. Uh, maybe we'll have some individuals focus on certain elements and certain types of crimes, uh, which is something that's been done in the past. Um, I'm sure that there are going to be short secretaries and support staff. Um, I see those individuals leaving on a regular basis, and that's that's always going to be a challenge going forward. Is making sure that they do have the adequate staff that they need to go to go forward and support the county. Uh, thank you. We are actually fully staffed uh, in both the uh, legal assistant realm as well as the prosecutor realm. We have had vacancies for a long time. We recently uh, made offers and received uh, acceptance for two graduating law school students from West Virginia University. Uh, we have had a hard time recruiting, so we went straight to the source and we went to the law school and did on-campus interviews and selected two individuals who are going to be joining us after they take and pass the bar exam this July. So with that, we will have 15 assistant prosecutors in the office uh, and we have 12 support staff. Now, um, as far as uh, their, their roles and, 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 and what they do, I do believe that I would like to change some of the structure just specifically as it relates to victim advocates. So we have one full-time victim advocate uh, who's actually out on maternity leave with the cutest little baby you've ever seen right <laughs> now. Um, and so we've got other staff covering that position. But if you look at comparatively the number of cases that we go through, and, and many of our cases unfortunately do involve victims, um, but right now just in the magistrate courts for what's, what's, coming, what's coming up, We've already had 217 felonies charged, uh, 2,641 misdemeanors, and so a lot of those involve victims. And we have one victim advocate. If you look down to, say, Jefferson County, uh, they do a quarter of the numbers that we do, and they have four times the victim advocates. Now, I'm not going to say that I'm going to come in to the county commission and ask for three additional full-time victim advocates right off the bat, but I do think it's something that we can address in the office that can serve the needs of our community. Because I've got to tell you, I'm a prosecutor. It's what I do. I prosecute cases. I look at the case. I analyze it. And I, and I attack it as a prosecutor. I'm not a social worker. And having someone who can work with me to translate legal speak into victim speak and translate victim speak into lawyer speak is just an invaluable resource for our county. And our victim advocate is wonderful, but she is just one. And I, I think she needs uh, a little bit more, and I think that's something that I will pursue as an ex-prosecutor. Let's exclude staffing for just a second with this question. Ex except for staffing, what do you believe to be the biggest challenge currently facing the prosecuting office? And again, you first, Mr. Kinzer. Aside from staffing, I think uh, the biggest problem is that this job is tough. 
burnout. Burnout is real. I've been doing it for almost a decade, and there are times that this job has just about broken me. Um, as a father, as, as a, just a, a human being, you, we, unfortunately, at the prosecutor's office every day, we, we see the worst of what happens in this community and the worst of what people can do to each other. And, um, you know, it, it does weigh on you. And so we try to balance as best we can that the darkness that comes with doing this job and, you know, trying to, trying to keep it light, trying to have, uh, uh, have morale events and, 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 and keep people in the right headspace. Because I think other than, other than staffing, that is our biggest issue as prosecutors generally. Lawyers, I mean, lawyers have a high rate of, of mental health issues and, uh, you know, drug and alcohol problems. It's, it's all documented. The suicide rate for lawyers is high. You know, crank that up even more for prosecutors. So um, I think that is a strong focus of mine and that I will continue to pursue uh, finding ways to balance out the heavy of what we have to deal with. Before you answer, Mr. Stepman, let me inject very quickly. I, I was not really anticipating that answer. You're the second person, though, within the past four or five days that has said the same thing to me about the burnout. I was something I was not really aware of. Ms. Stedman, go ahead, please. The biggest problem facing the prosecuting attorney's office in Berkeley County today is the huge drug epidemic that we're dealing with. It drives the majority of our problems. It leads to our child abuse and neglect cases. It leads to a, a number of felonies, a number of crimes. We need to make sure that we do what we can to support those in recovery. We need to work with the Day Report Center. We need to work with Mountaineer Recovery. We need to work with those who are struggling to get out of addiction. That basis is the root of the majority of the problems and the crime in our community. So that is the biggest problem plaguing the prosecuting attorney's office, and I will do everything I can to make sure that we, aggress we aggressively de defend against it and do what needs to be done. Thank you. Time for one more question before closing statements, and try to keep your answers to 60 seconds on these. John? <clears throat> With all that's been in the news recently at the national level, um, a prosecutor is an elected position. And it has awesome power on people's lives. How do you keep political pressures from influencing justice? And I don't know whose turn it is, to be honest with you. Let's go so with Mr. Stedman we'll first. Let's go with Mr. Stedman first. Well, I think you have to look at every case on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, you can't look at who they are, who their father is, who their brother is. You need to look at the case and see if a law was violated. If it does, if it was, it needs to be prosecuted. So I think we do the best that we can to make sure that justice remains blind. Uh, we can't allow special individuals to get special services in our community. We need to make sure that we're fair and that we are equal across the board, making sure that we enforce all the laws and go forward with prosecuting the cases that are brought to us. Thank you. I, I mentioned before that in this office, at least in the Berkeley County Prosecutor's Office, we have leaders who lead by example. Uh, and that includes our current leader, who is unfortunately leaving us for, for greener pastures and the bench. Um, but I've had the opportunity to be with her and sit in those rooms and have those conversations and watch her decision process. And I've got to tell you, uh, she exemplifies the idea that doing the right thing is never easy, but it's still the right thing. And, and it can be very unpopular at times. And we all know what, what happened uh, last year as far as our, our sheriff and that whole situation. That takes guts. And that takes someone who has the fortitude to make the right decision regardless of the possible political fallout or anything else. And I have seen that face to face. Uh, and I know that I am capable of the same and will uh, endeavor to do the same as prosecutor because you have to. It is a, we're already held to a higher standard and I'm accustomed to that. I've been doing, I've been prosecuting for almost a decade right here in Berkeley County. Uh, and I will continue that forward and making sound prosecutorial decisions based not upon who you are or who you know or what position you have, just based upon the law and what's right. Gentlemen, I'm reminded that our half-hour commercial break here is shorter than I thought it would be, so I'm going to ask you one additional question, uh, and that is something that came up with one of the candidates for Attorney General 
earlier in his campaign stating a uh, desire to give the Attorney General additional criminal jurisdiction. Uh, as a, a potential local uh, prosecuting attorneys, would you be in favor of the state's Attorney General's office having additional criminal uh, uh, jurisdiction? And I, I do realize it would take a, a constitutional change, uh, but uh, in theory, and Mr. Stebbin? I, I would not support that. I believe prosecution should be kept at the local level. Uh, it's not something that we should move up to the state level. Um, I think it, it's built that way for a reason, and it should be built that way for a reason. So I would not support the Attorney General prosecuting criminal cases. I will echo that and say, you know, they tried to do that before, years ago. Um, I was against it then. I'm against it now. Uh, the, if the Attorney General's office wanted to do something additional, I think it, the only thing that would make sense as far as our criminal realm would be if they had interest in taking that abuse and neglect docket because that's the only uh, scenario in which the county prosecutor represents a state agency. We represent the department in those proceedings. They are our client. Otherwise, we have no client. We represent the state of West Virginia, but in those cases, we represent a state agency. Every other state agency is represented by the AG's office. So uh, I do think that, it, but for some reason, they don't seem to have interest in that. They just want to come in and, and handle some of our, our criminal prosecutions, which uh, we are adamantly opposed to, I am adamantly opposed to as well. Thank you both. And now we'll move on to closing statements. Try to limit those to two minutes. And Jason, we will begin with you. More Capito has a clear immigration plan. Law enforcement will deport illegals. My grandfather instilled in me the values that you do the right thing for the right reason all the time. And that is the way that I live my life, and I think that's very important. It supports what I do in scouting. It supports what I do in the community. That's why I want to go forward and serve Berkeley County as the prosecuting attorney. My family has been here eight generations. I'm not looking to go anywhere. I want to be. I want to look forward to serving the people here. I have the opportunity to give back. I've got the appropriate experience to bring to this job. I've run businesses. I've run agencies. I understand what it needs to do that. I'm prepared to do that. I've got the experience and leadership to do that and ask to serve you as the Berkeley County prosecuting attorney in this next election. I'd ask for your vote on May 14th. And Joe Kinzer. Thank you. I am Joe Kinzer, and I'm asking for your vote on May 14th for prosecuting attorney. Uh, I am the only candidate who has devoted nearly the last decade to serving the people of Berkeley County and trying to keep them safe. I am the only candidate who already has a working relationship with the county commission, with the sheriff. Uh, I'm the only uh, candidate who has already been involved in the budgeting process, who can timely meet deadlines, who uh, has complied with all campaign finance rules. I am the only candidate who has the respect and support of the other assistant prosecutors in the office, and I can and will lead them by example. Uh, and I am the only candidate who has a reputation for preparedness and excellence in prosecution right here in Berkeley County. And that's why I have the endorsements that I have, and I'm so proud of them. I have served this county for a long time, and I'm asking for your help so that I can continue to serve as the elected prosecutor of this county. My website is joekinzerforprosecutor.com. I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well. Please reach out to me. And uh, I ask for your vote on May 14th, Joe Kinzer for prosecutor, so that I might continue to serve in this capacity. Thank you so much. Mr. Kinzer, Mr. Stedman, thank you both very much for an excellent half of an hour. We appreciate your time very much today. And best of luck to you both in the upcoming election. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rob. We are back with, uh, excuse me, <coughs> uh, in three minutes. To meet our candidates for the Berkeley County Board of Education, Melissa Power, Michael Martin, and James Human, right after this three-minute timeout. More Capito has a clear immigration plan. 